good morning to those watching online. As you can probably hear from my crackling, croaking voice, I'm struggling a little bit uh, this morning with a uh, rather bad cough from the cold. But I'm alright, I'm still standing. Um, thankfully, Shiva will be leading our service today, and I'll take all the later on when we do the and leave the notices. Um, just a simple um, announcement that we always do. Uh, sanitize your hands when you are in the building and please wear a mask if you're able to. Uh, it's not mandatory at the moment, but it's common sense that we um, look after ourselves in the church. We thank God that we're here. We thank the Lord that we're able to worship Him. And we thank Him that we're able to come into His house together as a family. So I'll hand over to Sheila who will lead us through the service today. Sheila. Thank you. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. <coughs> Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have a special prayer for today. And today is a Sunday before Advent. Eternal Father, who saw Jesus Christ ascending to the throne of heaven to rule over all things as a Lord and King, keep the church in unity and peace of your spirit and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now continue to preaching leading of praise and worship. Thank you, Savior. Good morning to God. So I will praise now, which is going to lead into Io speaking to us later about how we respond to suffering in our lives in a godly way. How we use what we learn here in this place today to inspire how we deal with the tougher stuff out there in the mission field. And a little later in the offertory song, we'll reflect on some of those, uh, some of the moments of suffering, that brokenness, that despair out there and ask that we are given compassion, that our cold hearts are melted, and that the spark that starts in this place today in our worship be turned into a flame. And I was thinking maybe we should hold that song until after I have spoken, after we uh, read, uh, after we heard from scripture, as we start to fan those flames, as we learn to be better respond with more compassion as we deal with the sufferings out there in our lives and the lives of those around us. But in the three songs we're singing now, of course that timeless reminder that none of this is possible unless we put our lives, our futures, our security solely into the hands of the only person, the only person who can truly lift us from our sufferings, and can truly help us in the dark times as well as celebrating the good. So we're going to have songs that rise up and praise us. Released from the shackles of 
the slavery of fear and sing out to the ancient of days our hosannas. Can you please stand with me as we get that praise rise up in us and sing our hosannas. No longer. 
Yes. 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 I, I say I'm blessed. And uh, so me, every day, it's a fresh beginning. So full of blessings and the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we will send our young ones to their classes now. So the ark, the ark, um, is um, the, um, their teachers are Adel and Chizoma. Uh, Kiman Kids, Bridget and Pitches, Jetty and Gladys and Rose, uh, Tim Life, Richard and Flora. Um, so, and what here is uh, me and Darius. So, what here will be sharing after communion or when, uh, when we are called to do so? Please, uh, as we say, um, I'm a new creation. Guys, uh, the second verse will be here to our various classes. And Ruth will be there to direct us if you are unsure. Okay? Uh, take it away, please. Long ago, 
when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of death from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to you. Living for God, now in chapter 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body has finished with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, heresy, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living, and the heap of use on you. But they may have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love, covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you will now come and lead us in the gospel reading as well as the sermon. Please come. Please come. The gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 26. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world? Yes, forfeit their soul. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, to give our life, we have come with open hearts. Let your words of life, words of hope, impact our hearts and be transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we are looking at responding to suffering in a godly way. Matthew chapter 16, from verse 21 to 23. We find Jesus predicting his own suffering and death to his disciples. We also see Peter's reaction 
to this news in verse 22. Peter said, Never, Lord. This shall never happen to you. Peter thought suffering and death was not in Jesus' future. So he tried to discourage Jesus. But Jesus rebuked him because he knew that God's will must be done. Christians still have that same mindset today. We believe that we should not suffer. But at some point, we might go through a time of suffering in the form of a trial, tribulation, or temptation. But as Christians, how do we handle or respond to suffering in a godly way? In the Gospel reading, we heard of how Jesus asked us to follow him. God loves us with an everlasting love. And the gift of salvation is bought out of great pain and suffering. So we are told by Jesus that we should deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. But what does this mean? If we are to live for Jesus, we must die to self. Denying ourselves is admitting that we are not in control. We need God to help us in times of trouble or weakness, especially when we face trials or temptations. So how do we take up our cross? I'm sure if I carry this around, I'll look a bit ridiculous. And people will wonder that what is wrong with this woman. It's a heavy task carrying a cross. I have a smaller one here, but even like that, this is a smaller cross. I'll still look ridiculous carrying this around. And the same applies to this material. So really, the cross that we are being told to carry here is not a physical cross, but it's a cross that is carried in our hearts. When Jesus dwells in your heart, in my heart, our love for Jesus will grow. We will follow him. We will live for him. We will die to self and surrender everything to God. So I'm going to ask a question now. And I need um, you to signify by raising your hands and by shouting in a loud voice. Are you a follower of Jesus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, when we lose our lives for Jesus, we find the life again and gain eternal life. So it is better to live for Jesus because there's no profit in gaining the whole world and forfeiting our souls. But there are some essential things that we need to do that can help us to live as true followers of Jesus. We must be born again. John chapter 3 verse 3. Repenting, confessing our sins, surrendering our lives to Christ, accepting his forgiveness, and beginning to walk in his ways. So that's the first step. We must be people who pray. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Jesus taught us how to pray. And many times he would go to the mountain to pray. If we are followers of Christ, prayer should be a major part of our lives. It should be an important habit. We should start the day with prayer end the day with prayer. And whenever we are troubled or burdened, we should take it to the Lord in prayer. Pray about everything. So how does prayer fit into your daily life? We must listen to Jesus. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. 
my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. How many of us listen to God? Are we obedient to his instructions? God is the master of the universe. We must allow God to direct us in every aspect of our lives. A follower of Jesus will hear, listen, and will not perish. We must believe in Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ, how can we surrender to him? How can we follow him? How can we live our lives for him? So in believing in Jesus Christ, we need to follow him. We must live by faith and not by sight. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. We must trust Jesus and have faith. Whenever we are facing trials, temptations, or we are suffering, we must believe that God is able to deliver us. Remember, He can do much more than we have asked for or imagined. We must obey Him. John 15, verse 10. It is important to obey God and His word. When we are disobedient, we sin against God. And we cannot remain in this love. If we are true followers of Jesus, then we would obey Him. We must love God. Mark 12, 30. We must love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and with all our strength. So forsaking the things of the world and loving God with everything that is within us. We must spread the gospel to all nations. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. It's the follower's responsibility to tell all people about the good news. We must serve him. John 12, 26. If we serve Jesus, we must follow him and his father will honor us. I'm sure we've um, been through some kind of suffering at some point in our lives. I looked up the meaning of suffering. What does it mean to suffer? It means the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. And the next question I asked myself was, why do we suffer? Scripture tells us that Christians will face trials and tribulations. We live in a fallen world, and we find this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. We are people that might make bad decisions, or other people who make poor decisions on our behalf, and these will sometimes have negative consequences, especially if we do not follow Jesus or live for him. There are also natural disasters, Accidents, evil happens in this fallen world. Finally, because we are Christians, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 says, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So as a follower of Jesus, we shall face persecution. We have examples in the Bible of Job, Joseph, and Daniel. But they all came out of tribulation victoriously. Why? Because they held on to God. Suffering is an aspect of living in this world. But because of Jesus, Christians can handle suffering in a godly way. In our reading, 1 Peter chapter 3, from verse 13 up to chapter 4, verse 11. It gives us an account of why we suffer and how we should handle suffering in a godly way. As followers of Jesus, sometimes we are insulted or we suffer when we do grief. But this is because it's the will of the Father. 
we are told in verse 13 to 14 that it is counted as a blessing unto us. Remember, Jesus told us that, was, that he must suffer many things. The world hated Jesus. He was crucified. So why should we believers expect to receive VIP treatment from the world? Jesus said in John 15, verse 20, If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. The word of God tells us that trials and tribulations we face in life reminds us that we are following a suffering Lord. The power of God is manifested and made perfect in our weakness. So whenever we undergo suffering, we are not alone. The power of God is with us. And at the end of it, we shall have joy. So we should not be afraid. We listened to the song earlier when we were told that we are no longer slaves to fear because we are children of God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us a sound mind and a spirit of power. So we should not be afraid during the time of suffering. In our hearts, we should be rest assured that God is with us. God is for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us in our time of trouble or need. He is our refuge, our shield, our strength, our defense, our strong deliverer. He is able to deliver us as long as we follow Him, have faith and trust him at all times. John 16 verse 33 says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take part, I have overcome the world. At times, suffering happens due to trials, a test of faith, or tribulation. As a follower of Jesus, we have been equipped to know how to handle suffering. So what should be our attitude to suffering? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 13, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when, when his glory is revealed. James 1, from verse 1 to 2, reminds us that we should consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever we face trials of many kinds. Because we know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So suffering should be received with joy because we participate in the suffering of Christ. And there shall be rejoicing when the glory of the Lord is revealed. So the question, how should we handle suffering in a godly way? First Peter chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 tells us we should do good and live for God. We should look towards Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Christ suffered in his body, so we should have the same attitude. Whenever we face suffering, we should stop asking the question, why me? Sometimes Christians respond in anger. They walk away from God, but that would only prolong the situation or make it worse. There have been times when I have faced trials. But I rise up to the occasion, cling to God in prayer and in His Word, because I know that He is the only one that can see me through the situation. So we must not be discouraged or allow our suffering to take us away from God. 
When we turn to God, He will walk with us. He will meet us at our point of view, and our faith will be strengthened. So we need to focus on living for God, because we are followers of Christ. We do not live according to our fleshly desires. Instead, we live for the purpose and the will of God. When we are in right standing with God, He will definitely fight for us. 1 Peter 4, verse 5 stresses the reason why we must carry our cross and forsake all our old ways. We are accountable to God, who will judge the living and the dead. We must be alert and have a sober mind and be prayerful. Remember, the enemy is prowling and looking for whom to destroy. We should love one another as Jesus commanded us. When we love one another with the love of God, love helps us to forgive one another. We should meditate on the word of God and confess his word over the situation. And God will surely intervene. As I was preparing for this sermon, a song kept on coming into my spirit. And only for me to look at the uh, song sheet, and the song is actually on this song sheet. So we are going to sing it all together. It's song number nine, so you can all come to your song sheet. Song number nine. We are going to sing it with all our hearts. Okay?
and um, you have said that you will not expose us to things beyond which we can carry without granting us the means of escape. We thank you because we've seen that in our lives today. Father, we thank you for all we have been through during this week. Many have been ill, many are still ill, many have been to hospital and back, many have been given all care, many are still being investigated. Father, whatever the circumstance of our brothers and sisters here present and outside here, Father, let it end with this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this morning, this day, we want to thank you for your goodness that never ceases. We want to thank you for all who are sick. We just want to thank you because you said in everything we should give thanks. We want to commit them to your hands, O oh Lord, that Father, they will begin to feel your hands, your healing hands, as we speak. We pray for Amju, we pray for Minta, Kay's mother, for Margaret, who is unwell, for Tom, Lily's husband, Bernadette, who is unwell and receiving kidney treatment, Marcia, who is unwell, Kate, Ivy, Maria's mom, Maria, James, June, Mercy, all of who are unwell. We pray for Denise, operation on her back in November. We pray for Melina, Reverend Evo's wife. We pray for Nasi, who has kidney problems. We pray for Iqbal who has a back problem. Father, we pray for all these people and that, Lord, we pray that you will not leave them in a situation where the world asks them, where is your God? Father, let the world know that you are God in the lives of these people we have mentioned. Let them begin to receive your healing as we speak in the name of Jesus. Let all diagnoses, Father, be turned to goodness for them in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray this morning, uh, this day for Oscar, who has a tumor on his foot. Melene, um, our evening worship um, leader, and her home, who are both unwell. We pray for all those who suffer from coronavirus. Father, we commit everyone to your hands. As our faces are different, so the desires of our hearts are different. So our pains, our aches, our sorrows are different. But in all of this all, you have promised that peace be still. You have said it is well. And we hold on to your it is well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we pray for the various parts of the world where there is war and conflict. We pray for children and families in Afghanistan who are facing starvation this winter due to changes in governance. We pray for the refugees on the Polish border in Belarus. We pray for an end to street violence and knife crime in London. We pray against police brutality across the world. Father Lord, we pray that you arise so that our enemies will be scattered in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we want to commit everyone here present, old and young. Father, we pray that by the mere fact that they are here today, Lord, this week will be the best for them in the name of Jesus. It will be the beginning of greater weeks ahead in the name of Jesus. As the year comes to an end, Father, we will not mourn anyone in this church in the name of Jesus. Even our families, Father, you will keep us. You will protect us. You will, you will, you will watch over us two for seven in the name of Jesus. Father, as for those who are yet to know you, Father, you will give them the opportunity to encounter you in a big way. Lord, we pray for homes that, Father, you will be the center. Father, we pray for those who have not given their life to Satan, Father, that you will deliver them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Lord, you said our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Father, we 
and pray that you will help us to embrace the Holy Spirit in totality in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, any utterance in our mouth that can cause anyone to fall or fail, Father, prevent us from such in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the family of and in Mera, Hickot, and we also pray for the family of Chuk's neighbor who died suddenly last night. Father, we pray for comfort for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we remember all who have died as a result of the serious coronavirus outbreak in Iran. We pray for God's comfort for grieving families. We also pray for nations where they are still taking coronavirus for granted. Father, that you will grant them wisdom to know that this thing is still locking around in corners, causing havoc. Lord, we pray for our young pharmacist friend who passed away last week. Father, we pray that you will uphold her family and comfort them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the leadership of this church, even as we continue to seek your face for the next vicar to take this church to the next level. Father, we pray that you will begin to touch the hearts of the right person so that they will come forward in the name of Jesus. Let us not encounter any difficulty in getting the right person to move St. John's to the next level. We are your Holy Spirit will operate without limitation in the name of Jesus. We pray for the weeks ahead, the months ahead, that Lord, all will be controlled by you as usual. Because without you, we wouldn't be here. Father, we bless you. Once more, Lord, we pray for those who are seeking job, that you will open doors for them. For those who are working, that you will secure them in the places of work. Because your word says, the earth is the Lord and its fullness thereof. And your word also says, you appoint kings. The heart of kings and the heart of men are in your hands. And you can turn them in our favor. As concerning anybody, anyone, anywhere who will be going for interview, these people within the next few days, within the next few weeks, Father, we pray that you will grant them favor, uncommon favor, uncommon wisdom, uncommon knowledge, and uncommon understanding in the name of Jesus. Above all, Father, you will grant them the job where they will have peace to be able to serve you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for, for this opportunity to stand before you to say thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to be alive today. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Because we pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May you stand if you're able to that we share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. <coughs> Let us then pursue all that makes the peace and builds up our common life. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And for those watching online, may the peace of the Lord be with you too. Thank you, Lord. Peace be with you. We're now going to sing our next hymn, which is also our offer to him. Um, hymn number seven, Beauty for Brokenness. Um, if this is our offering hymn, so if you wish to make an offering, um, we're not passing any bucket or any bucket around, um, but there is a bucket at the back of the church where you can place your offering to ask any of the welcomers, they'll show you where it is. So, um, Beauty for Brokenness, hymn number seven. Please stand <coughs> to be able to enjoy the song. Thank you. 
in the church. If you do not wish to receive on the bread, uh, do come forward and receive a blessing. Uh, bring here, especially children, bring, bring children forward to receive a blessing. Uh, as we have not yet received any guidance about uh, sharing the commentaries, on this occasion again, uh, I will share, I will bring the wine of the congregation, uh, but we will share the bread together. So brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
that's the next week. All right. So please ignore the uh, notice that I put there. Um, that, that's the next week. However, there is another notice for the men's group. That's why I wanted him to be here. I think there is a collection of leaves in the, in the yard for Saturday. Saturday the 27th. Um, this is not being sexist or anything, but it's the men's group organizing it. But ladies, if you wish to join in too, you are very, very welcome to do so. Saturday, uh, what time do you know we have? 11 o'clock? Sorry? 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. 9 o'clock in the morning, please come to the church. Um, I think I'll be around anyway, we've broken up. But at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, please do come. We have a lot of these in the yard. Uh, we need to collect that. So please come and join in if you're able to do so. Some of you may have noticed that we have visitors in our church yard. Um, little tiny visitors who are not welcome in many places usually. Um, we are working on that. Um, we have asked somebody to um, come to help us um, eradicate the problem. Um, but I'll keep you notified as we go along. But um, just to let you know that uh, it's on hand, it's being dealt with. Um, so don't, don't be petrified, don't you know, think that this happened. Um, most of the other notices are straightforward. We have an evening service tonight, an um, evening communion, and um, I am so graciously um, offered to stand in my to preach from in my place because my, my, my voice is a little bit up and down. Um, but um, she, she has um, offered to preach in my place. So if you want to hear the sermon once again, you're welcome to come and hear this wonderful sermon again. This time she'll probably, she'll probably carry it across on her shoulder. <laughs> um, but there is also a notice that um, uh, the all night prayer meeting that is um, advertised there apparently has the wrong date. The date there says October 29th. It is for the 27th, 26th, right? 26th of November, this Friday. Um, all the details are there. Those watching online, the details are not on your online newsletter. Um, if you're able to uh, pass by the church and pick up this, because we don't want to publish um, that numbers and so on online. <coughs> so um, get the, the um, newsletter from the church or from somebody um, and follow the details. We start at 10, 10 o'clock at night and end about 12 30, sometimes 1 o'clock in the morning. It's a time for prayer, a time for praise, a time for us to fellowship together. Apart from, oh yes, the bride busters, you still need more people. Yeah. Um, speak to Bridget, I think it's not around at the moment, but speak to Bridget at the back. Um, she will give you more information if you want to join in. We had two people join us, new people join us yesterday. Um, we thank a lot for, for you, Bridget um, and Precious. We will bless you, and uh, if there's anybody else who wants to pray, um, please do let uh, Bridget know Bridget is at the back of the church. Apart from that, um, we will do, I think everything else is straightforward, so let's do our birthdays. Birthdays, I need to read, let me just do the cards first, and then there is a birthday that we may not have on our database. Um, to Gad, Don Joe, Assuming, I think it is, assuming. Uh, happy third birthday. This is Dad Dunk. And then, yeah, happy birthday. Three years old. Good man. Uh, Olivia Anyemeka. Olivia? No? Happy, happy fourth birthday, Olivia. If you're watching online, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Emmanuel Eugiren. Emmanuel Eugiren. No, Emmanuel? Okay. If you're watching online as well, Emmanuel, happy birthday to you. Um, happy birthday to Chizong Guru. Chizong Guru. Happy birthday to ah, you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Enrique Businge. Enrique Businge. Businge. No? Happy birthday to you, Enrique, if you're watching. Happy 15th birthday. Um, there is a birthday here which is not on the list, but I'm going to just before I forget it. 
Vanek Moulton, Vanek Moulton over here. Vanek normally thanks the service once in a while, but uh, I don't know if she's here today. Okay, if you are watching online, Vanek, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy 18th birthday. Happy birthday yesterday. Okay, we have a few more. Sinisola Osegare. Simsola, Simsola, happy birthday to you. Kami, Kami, teachers, Kami, teachers. Okay, happy birthday, Kami. Eunice, hey, Eunice, you're here somewhere, okay? Are you not? Happy birthday to you, Eunice. Are you here somewhere? Ah, happy birthday to you, Eunice. Happy birthday. Okay, still 15. Okay. Ngozi Osadele, Ngozi. Happy birthday, Rosie. Rose Nata. I don't know if Rose is here. Oh, Rose, yes, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Joyce Dolphin. Joyce Dolphin. No, happy birthday, Joyce. And Phyllis Richard. Maybe not here. But happy birthday to you, Phyllis, if you're watching online. And any more birthdays? Any other birthdays? No, just make sure that. <laughs> Yeah, I get that right. Okay. All right. Beat us up. And the last one of the men. What was this 
person's name? A. Herod, B. Herodias, C. Pilate, or D. Henry?
and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us, and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh,